and let's get this over with, for both our sakes. Am I one of those carriers? Come on, Di. We're graduating next year. We yeah. deserve to celebrate. I love you, Cyrus. You were held in resume Take for care. a long time. Longer than anyone I've Deanna, ever met. Deanna, it's going to be okay, Cyrus. Your dad assured me that everything was exciting, but... We've been worried sick. Why didn't you call us earlier? Si. Tell me, You're Cyrus. doing all right? How old Cyrus, are you? Please calm down. He said down. I was compatible and whatnot. It does seem like I wish a good my dad would have let me know what he was I'll going to visit all the time. Cyrus. I promise. We thank you for your continued services. I you? know. Cyrus, You're right. they I haven't told let us you. leave the facility if they since met the our requirements, oh, yeah, we take them in. How are you That's feeling? That's a huge breach of privacy. I seriously Damien? doubt that they have anything there? to hear. the announcement last week? They filled up quickly. Everyone has been taking care of me. Sir, we need to run some more tests. Sorry, sir. I don't have anyone by that name on the register. Ma'am, please escort Mr. Cyrus back down. I'll see you soon. Hello and welcome back to Remember the Flowers. We'll be continuing where we left off, which, if you recall, is after Cyrus realizes that all his memories are indeed real, and that basically everyone he knew is dead. So that's a bummer. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, we kind of saw this coming, although some people were hoping that it's, you know, not true. Some people were thinking that it's sort of like a Matrix situation where all the memories are fake. And myself included but yeah you also sort of knew deep down inside of your heart that Damien was indeed dead and that Axel is not Damien reincarnated <laughs> but anyways um so yeah let's continue and see how Cyrus is faring because he seems unusually okay with this whole situation which I guess would stem from the fact that in his previous life, you know, before he was rescued and sort of lost his memories, he kind of uh, had already accepted his fate and the fate of, you know, everyone else. But at the same time, this is another Cyrus. This is a Cyrus that is a combination of that old Cyrus and the new one, which still held out the hope that everyone was alive and that he could somehow rejoin with them. So, yeah. Without further ado, let's continue the story of Remember the Flowers. Man, what a weird day. I look up at the ceiling. More and more starts to set in. Maybe I should have asked Vita for more advice. Despite having come to terms with everything years ago, I feel a pit in my stomach. It's something I can't identify right away. Sadness? Remorse? Anxiety? I guess it was only a little while ago I still believed I had a place to go back to. I really am stupid. I pull my knees up to my chest, opting to instead stare at the floor. I said I felt nothing, but I guess that was a lie too. I wish I could go back to feeling nothing. Right now, I just feel like shit. And nothing is better than shit by a country mile. It's hard to keep track of my thoughts as I try to filter through everything. A few centuries worth of memories are bouncing around. Although I wasn't conscious most of the time, it's still a surreal feeling. I feel extremely tired. For the first time in a while, my mind is spent despite my body being somewhat awake. I eventually get up and turn off the lights, before taking my shoes and socks off and laying them by the door. With a bit of exhaustion, I make my way back to my new bed. Might as well test it out. I try to get comfortable, but don't crawl under the blankets just yet. It's alright, I guess. It doesn't compare to Aaron's bed. Or Damien's. I don't know what time it is when I wake up. I could have slept for a few minutes or a few hours. All I know is that I'm thirsty. 
I dredge my way out of the bed to go to what I assume is the bathroom. After flipping the lights on, I see it's pretty bare bones. Just a standing shower, a sink, and a toilet. Oh well, as long as it has running water. I turn on the sink faucet, which takes a couple of seconds to spit out any water. Guess it has been a while since anyone was here. I cup my hands under the running water before drinking it slowly. I smack my lips a few times. It tastes a bit funny, but it'll do. I'm not really in the mood to leave right now. After a few handfuls of water, I turn the lights off and head back to bed. I'm still very tired. I have various dreams recounting the course of my life. Subconsciously, I try skipping through them like ads on a video. I don't want to remember. When I wake up again, I immediately realize that I've been out for a long time. It might even be the middle of the night at this point. Aaron never came back, I guess. With a sigh, I sit up and hold my head in one hand. I wish I could stop dreaming. I feel thirsty again, and a bit hungry. Eh, maybe later. I'm really not in the mood to eat. I decide to just get some more water and go back to sleep for the night. This goes on for the next day or so. I don't even know at this point. All I know is that every time I wake up, I feel progressively more tired. Fine by me. It helps me get back to sleep. The water doesn't taste bad anymore. In fact, it doesn't taste like anything. I don't even turn the light on anymore. The dark is nice. Being so far underground has its perks. No way for sunlight to get in. Not sure why I'm letting myself feel comfortable down here. I can't escape a thought in the back of my head. The more I fall asleep, the more I hope I don't wake up. I get back into bed, still not covering up. I rest my hands on my chest. My ribs feel more pronounced. Oh well. I soon fall back to sleep. Maybe this will be the last time. We'll see, I guess. It hurts to open my eyes. I'm even starting to feel dizzy, like a bad hangover or something. All I've had is water, so it's not that. I shake my head to try to get rid of it, which only makes me feel even more woozy. I don't have time to figure it out as I hear a knock coming from the door. Who could it be? Vita? Cyrus? Cyrus, are you there? Oh. It's just Aaron. With some effort, I get up. My bones start to pop as I shuffle to the door. I have to squint to adjust to the hallway lights. My ears ring. It takes a second before I can understand what Aaron's saying. There you are. Vita said that they brought you here. Oh, yeah, just a little while ago? What's up? A... Uh, a while ago? Cyrus, what's going on? Nothing. I've just been sleeping. I was pretty tired. Cyrus, it's been over a day since we last saw each other. It's almost five o'clock. Really? It didn't feel that long. Do you mind if I come in? Not really. Help yourself.
I move out of the way to let him through. Thanks. Uh, where's your shirt? I sluggishly shrug. My motor functions are definitely suffering. It's, uh, it's more comfortable like this. Why? Uh, what's up? Oh, nothing. Just thought you preferred to be covered up. Oh, yeah. I guess that was the point of the turtleneck, huh? Not really. If you want, I can put it back on. No, no. I just want to make sure you're comfortable. I casually stretch. Mm, yeah, I'm pretty comfortable. Beats being stuck in a container unit all day. Yeah. He looks worried for some reason. Did you need something? Not in particular. Well, actually, that's not true. I... He sighs with exasperation. I'm sorry I didn't come sooner. I was embarrassed over how I snapped at you the other day. Did he? I guess he did get a little upset, but I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Oh, there's nothing to apologize for. I didn't think much of it. Well, still, I wouldn't be sensitive to what you're going through. I don't want you to get the impression that I'm only thinking about myself. I raise my hands in protest. I've never had that idea of you, Aaron. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. I close my eyes and think back to when he rescued me from Resume. I was barely lucid as he carried me on his back, but I'm pretty sure he protected me the best he could. That is until... Oh wait. I suddenly reach the back of my head and start to prod around. There are a few lumps here and there that shouldn't be. Hmm... What's wrong? Oh, just, I think I need to ask Vita for some help later. I see. Well, I brought you something that should make your life easier. Oh? Well, what's that? Aaron finally gets his usual smile back as he takes out his axiom. He flips to the inventory screen and produces something shiny and cylindrical. I present your very own axiom. It's called the Computer Alpha Integrated Version 0.1, called CAI for short. He presents it to me with a little bit of flair. I completely forgot about that. It almost makes me feel excited. It's a lot bigger than the other models I've seen. Are you sure you want to give this to me? I'm not sure I really deserve it. Nonsense. Like I said before, I think it was meant for you. Really, it's no big deal. If you say so. Well, thank you, Aaron. I'll try not to break it or anything. I'd like to see you try. It's really something else, like someone I know. I'm not sure how to really use it, but I'm sure you're smart enough to figure it out. Something's off with his speech. I think he's trying to come off as overtly joyful. It's like he's trying to cheer me up. He really shouldn't be worrying about me this much. I should try to play along, at the very least. I didn't live this long to let my brains turn to mush. How hard can it be? Aaron looks a bit confused. Th th that's the spirit? He shakes it off, pointing at my arm. Here, hold out your arm and I'll attach it to you. I hold out my left arm. Oh wait, are you left handed? Not really, I think I'm ambidextrous, but I've probably forgotten how to use my other hand like that. Why? Oh, duh. We want to attach this to your dominant hand. Really? That sounds counterintuitive. Won't it be awkward to type with? A bit, but this model is specifically meant for your dominant hand. I'm sure you'll adapt to it in no time. Aaron holds out his wrist with his axiom. These models are useful but they're not suited for everything. He shifts attention back to the one he's holding. We got this because we had a mission at the manufacturer's laboratory. They were grateful enough that they outfitted us with axioms along with a few extra goodies. Sounds like y'all do amazing work. I hope I won't be in the way. Aaron coughs. You won't be. We'll make sure that you're safe and sound no matter what. 
Just don't let me distract you, alright? Uh, yeah. I anyway. He holds out the device for me to look at. Besides being silver, there's not much else to comment on. I recommend that you look away when we put it on. It's not very pleasant. I cock my head at him. Aaron, I'm sure I can handle it. I slowly turn to show him my ports, indicating that I've been through some shit already. Uh, fair enough. Don't say that I didn't warn you. I casually hold out my right arm. How much more terrible can my hubris get me into? Maybe it's just curiosity, but I want to see how this plays out. Aaron slides one finger down the bottom of the device, causing it to open. Aaron completely calms himself. Ready? Yeah, go for it. Almost instantly, it clamps down on me. It isn't long until I feel a sensation that I haven't felt in a long time. Metal digging underneath skin. I'm surprised there's no blood. This technology is pretty amazing, although I could do without the sounds of machinery tearing through my skin. Aaron doesn't seem to hold the process in esteem like I do. The metal feels warm as it starts to wrap around my muscles. The axiom starts to glow a verdant shade of green before altering its shape and size. It reaches from my wrist to the middle of my forearm. It reminds me of an arm brace, a really expensive one. Soon afterward, two slits start to etch themselves on the top side in the form of a cross. The glowing recedes as the axiom settles down. It's not as warm as it was. It's rather cool to the touch. I can move my wrist without feeling restricted. It fits perfectly. Huh. See? That wasn't so bad. I told you I'd be fine. Aaron just looks at me with a somber expression. What? Did something go wrong? Cyrus, there's something that I'd like to do. It might be a little weird, so I'd understand if you said no. Oh, uh, what is it? Aaron's tail flicks behind him. Do you mind if I give you a hug? Huh? Is that all? No, I don't mind at all. What brought this on? I'm cut off as I'm almost completely enveloped by him. He's holding me close and tight. My shortness of breath clues me in that he's not holding back. Cyrus, I know you've been through a lot. More than anyone ever, I'm pretty sure. The fact that you're still here is a testament to how strong you are. But... I can feel him shudder, then he starts to stroke my back. I don't interrupt him. I know... I know that you can't feel pain. That they made sure that they could be as efficient as possible with you to produce the results that they wanted. Even so. It's okay if you're hurting, Cyrus. You have people who want to help you now. I know we haven't known each other for long, but I can just see it in your eyes. Aaron starts to stroke the back of my head and chuckles a bit, albeit with some hiccups. You're not as good as actor as you might think you are. It's clear to anyone how hard this is for you. I don't want you thinking that you should just bottle all of this up. I want to help you through this however I can. I can feel a bit of rumbling in his chest. It reminds me of... Someone I loved who is no longer here. It feels... Really warm. Instinctively, I raise my arms around him, embracing him in turn. Damn this tiger. It's been centuries since I've shed a tear. Let alone this many. I don't know how long we stay like this. My sense of time has been screwed up for a while. Aaron eventually pats my back and slowly lets go. I try not to make it obvious that I was suffocating, but I didn't want to let go. Sorry. I know that was sudden. It's okay, Aaron. I think I needed that. 
I use my thumb to wipe my right eye clean. I, uh, really appreciate everything you've done for me. I probably seem distant and all, but... Cyrus, you've been through something traumatic. A lot of things, in fact. I'm not going to hold it against you if you're feeling mixed up about everything. However... He starts to rub the top of my head. I will get mad at you if you keep it to yourself. Let us help you, all right? Erwin looks at me with those gentle eyes of his. I think back to the nurses at Resume and how many of them didn't even look at me. Not directly, anyway. Yeah, I might need some help getting help, if that makes sense. Of course it does, Cyrus. We'll be with you every step of the way, I promise. I can't even begin to remember the last time I felt this. Oh. Thank you, Aaron. I really, really mean it. I can't deny that I'm a broken mess of a person. But the fact that there's someone out there who wants to try to help me is all I need. I can tell that you mean it. Like I said, you're not the best actor. I'm just out of practice. Right. He gives my head two more pats before retracting his paw. Speaking of, uh, what's going on? You've looked a bit out of it since I walked in. As if on cue, my exposed stomach starts to growl. I rub the back of my head with a bit of shame. Ah, well, I guess I'm a bit hungry. When was the last time you ate? He has a serious look on his face. It makes me feel even more ashamed. Uh, when we last had dinner together? What? I nearly stumble backwards at the sudden exclamation, but manage to catch myself. Cyrus, that was almost three days ago! Ah, uh -huh. was it? Aaron huffs as he pulls up his axiom, about to type something. Okay, I'll yell at you later. We gotta get you something to eat. I'll run home and grab you something. He mumbles under his breath. Should have waited before giving you the axiom. He hesitates for a moment and then sighs. I should really give you a punishment for making me worry, but I think you need something nice after everything. Have you remembered any of your favorite foods? It's been so long. What were they? Oh, I know. Uh, have you heard of carbonara? My mom used to make it for special occasions, with lots of bacon in it. Mom used to make it the best. Hmm, I've never heard of it. I'll do some research and see what I can do. Oh yeah, here's my ID. Aaron fishes out a slip of paper from his pocket and hastily gives it to me. Want some help with your axiom before I go? I hold up my right hand to get a good look at it. I can see my expression in the reflection. Maybe later. I think I need to take a minute for myself before worrying about it. By all means, I'll be back in an hour or so. Rest up, Cyrus. I will. Thank you, Aaron. Good. I'll see you soon. I got to plop my butt on my bed. Sounds like a plan. I'll let you know if anything comes up. You better. Aaron's tail swishes happily as he makes his way out of my room but not before waving at me. I give a small smile and wave back. Once the door is closed, I look down at the pillow to my left and immediately flop into it. I'm still tired, but I'm looking forward to waking up this time. Come on, Cyrus. Don't leave me hanging. Play it for me. Damien and I are sitting on his bed back home. He's bouncing excitedly next to me, causing the bed to creak as it moves. Hey, calm down. You know I'm pretty shy about performing. It's been a while since I've played the guitar in front of anyone, let alone sing. You should have thought about that before hyping me up so much. 
All I did was say I wrote something for you. And? No one's ever done that for me before. Of course I'm excited. He's radiating optimism. He's always been pretty supportive of my creative ventures. I figure since his birthday is around the corner, I try to write him something. Well, just know that it's not finished yet. I'll show you what I've got. It's just the lyrics and some chords. That's way more than I could ever hope to manage. The last time you tried to explain your process, my head started spinning. <laughs> it took me a while to figure out, mainly because I learned between schoolwork. Well, I'm glad you did. We wouldn't have met otherwise. I push up my glasses to hide the fact that I'm blushing. He's right. I had a free afternoon near the end of my undergraduate career. I brought out my guitar to play in a secluded part of campus. There's a small garden by the track and field that no one really knows about. Damien was out on his run for the afternoon and caught me playing. Then we started talking and... Well, I can't help but smile. All right, you ready? Damien stops his bouncing and gives me his full attention. Absolutely. I take a deep breath before tuning my guitar. I give it a few strums and then clear my throat. I've been wondering what happens at the end of time. Was it all for nothing? Was there any point? I haven't been able to resist the temptations of finding out. Yet, there's you, even when it fades. You believe in us after eternity. I hope I'll see you until it all turns to nothing, even if we're like shooting stars across the empty sky. An annoying beeping starts. Is it my alarm? Wait. No, I don't have an alarm clock yet. Groggily, I sit up. My axiom is making some kind of noise. How the hell do I turn it off? I start waving my hand over it a few times. Eventually, a screen pops up. It's a lot less staticky than the other ones I've seen. It's completely transparent. Greetings, operator. Synchronization is complete. Current synchronization rate, 67%. What are your orders? Uh... It's like I can hear it in my head. Nothing? Stand by, I guess? Affirmative. And just like that, the screen fades back inside. What a weird way to wake up. I lie back down and stare at the ceiling. It's been a while since I had such a clear dreams of the past. I wonder if moving on for the second time will be harder than the first. Maybe I should start a dream journal. Could be a good way to process everything. I hold my arm up, looking at my axiom. I'm sure there's something on this thing that resembles a notepad. I zero in on my expression once more. My bangs are getting long again. I need to find someone to help me cut them. Hard to believe my hair was ever brown. Now that I'm awake, I might as well figure out my axiom some more. I sit up and look it over. Despite being embedded in my skin, it's not uncomfortable. I have full mobility, for the most part. It feels a little tight if I flex my wrist, but that's about it. I swipe my hand over to try and activate it, assuming it turns on like others I've seen. Thankfully, the lines etched into the metal start to light up almost instantly. I'm greeted with a much different screen than any I've seen on other axioms. It's much clearer, almost like glass. A clear-cut border surrounds the whole thing. Everything seems to be in color, 
despite being translucent. Are the opacity settings to your liking? I hear that strange robotic voice in my head again. Uh, sure. Sensing doubt. Recalibrating. The screen becomes much less translucent. It's almost like a floating tablet screen. Are the opacity settings now to your liking? I'm starting to get a headache from all of this. Aaron didn't mention an AI. How are you talking inside my head? Apologies, operator. After running diagnostics, you are found to not be my former user. Would you like a walkthrough of my capabilities? Who was your former user? I'm sorry, operator, but that is classified information. What the? Maybe later. I just want to look through it myself. Is there internet? Unfamiliar with the term. Please elaborate. Oh yeah, I guess the internet is no longer a thing. What do they use now? Sensing operator intent. Would you like to open the gate? The what? Oh, that's what they call it. Duh. About a decade ago, some scientists were talking about how nice it was to have something like the internet again. I guess this thing can read my thoughts. That's kind of weird. Would you like to turn off the mental link? I answer without hesitating. Yes, please. Understood. Bzz. Now the voice is coming from the device itself. If you would like to turn mental link back on, simply head to the settings. Much better. My stomach starts to growl again. I should have checked the time before falling asleep. How long has it been? I try to find a clock on this thing. It's a few minutes to 5 p.m. Okay, good. I didn't sleep too long this time. I get the piece of paper with Aaron's ID. I'm not sure if it's because of the lack of food in my stomach, but it's really hard to read this. His handwriting is... atrocious. Uh, CAI? Yes, operator. How do I input someone's ID? One moment. Without me lifting a finger, a screen pops up with a keypad. Okay, this thing is pretty neat. It takes me a few tries to input the ID code correctly. Eventually, a name pops up. Aaron Cosmas. It's a bit finicky to type with my left hand, but I eventually manage to send a message to him. I think I got this to work. Let me know, I guess. I slide the screen away, entering the main interface. It reminds me of tablets from back in the day. Soon, a notification pops up. I click the button, revealing a message from Aaron. Looks like it. I was just about to head over. I think I figured out how to make that dish you asked for. I'll see you in the break room soon, okay? I wait a minute before responding. I hope this thing doesn't have the read receipts, but I remember my I am etiquette. Sure, I'll be there in a sec. After I send the message, I try sliding the screen away. It takes a few tries. But I can't deny how cool it is. I get up from the bed. I'm still a bit woozy, but I persevere. I make it to the bathroom, flicking on the lights. My eyes strain to adjust. I smile sadly at myself in the mirror. Man, I look like crap. I wash my face before heading out, grabbing my turtleneck and sliding on for the first time in days. Yeah, it definitely feels a bit more loose. Whoops. It fits a little oddly over the Axiom. I'm not sure how I'll use it. I'll ask Aaron to bring me some of the clothes he ordered. Maybe I'll wear a t-shirt? I could try to rock a tank top like Damien used to wear. I turn off the light before leaving my room. Thankfully, my room isn't too far from the break room. It takes me a little longer than I'd like to just walk over. I can smell something good from around the corner, making my mouth water. I pick up my old man's pace and make my way inside. 
Eren is already plating what looks like a good recreation of Carbonara. Hey there, dinner's almost ready. How are you feeling? Out of habit, I almost say I'm fine, but... Honestly, I could be better. Looking forward to eating something. I give him a sheepish smile, and he responds with a warm smile of his own. Good thing I brought plenty. You can have as much as you want. Thank you. I appreciate it. Aaron pulls up a chair for me. Of course. Here, I'll get you some water. I nod as I look over the plate in front of me. The spice smell is a bit different, but it smells good. I guess I don't even know how mom made it. I can't even tell if I'm shaking from excitement or from a lack of eating anything. Probably the latter. My hand is trembling slightly as I try to scoop up some pasta with my fork. It's really, really good. How is it? It's my first time, so go easy on me. It's... amazing, Aaron. That's all I can say before taking another forkful. Definitely getting some bacon in there. I guess that's still around. Thank God. I'm happy to hear that. So, tell me, what's been going on? He casually pulls up a chair across from me as he starts eating his own meal. Well, I've been having these dreams lately. Aww. To be continued. See you soon in Arc 3. Uh, well, that was fast, actually. God, I wish Aaron would cook for me. Uh, so, yeah. So, all in all, I guess it kind of ended on a good note. I mean, Cyrus is definitely doing better than he wasn't letting on before. So, yeah. Huh. It's also good that they didn't end on a sort of like, oh, Aaron is angry at you now. So, he... He came and apologized, even though it wasn't completely his fault. Um, but yeah, so... <sighs> it's nice, and I... Of course, I'm looking forward to the future to see what they have in store. Okay, so I I'm lying. I actually kind of know what's coming up next. I haven't read it, because it's not available, I think. But I know what's coming... Anyways, um, so yeah. So write down your thoughts about, uh, chapter 9. Did you like it? Did you like the whole reveal? Were you surprised? Stunned? Uh, speechless? Um, I, I was when I read it when it came out for Patreon. And, yeah. Like, I, I was so tempted to just record then, but, um, because of what always happens with the smoke room, I was like, no, I have to wait, I have to wait. But then, um, Orion told me, like, yeah, we're probably not gonna change too much, so you could record it if you wanted to. But yeah. So, eh. Anyways, um, actually, how long is this episode? It's just under, uh, an hour, so it'll have to be its own episode. Anyways, um, but yeah. <sighs> Smelly pooper. Pooper scooper. <sighs> I wonder when we're going to see you again. Anyways, um, but yeah. Write down your thoughts on the second arc of Remember the Flowers. And specifically Chapter 9, because that's what we're talking about right now. <sighs> I don't foresee Cyrus doing anything with Eren, meaning, like, getting close to Eren. Because this, is, this story isn't about, like, you know getting a boyfriend or whatever. Or at least it isn't right now. Um, Because, I mean, he just got his memories. Everyone's dead, so he has... He's still going to have to process that, so he's 
not thinking about that yet. And honestly, I don't see Eren being interested in that way. Maybe... He, first and foremost, he wants to know what happened to Xavier, and it's clear that Cyrus knows something about Xavier. And hopefully it's not bad news, but I kind of assume that it's going to be bad news. Um, I am also very curious, though, because we know that Xavier might have been involved with um, what happened to Cooper's special friend. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I want to know more about Xavier and a little bit about that past, too. Hopefully we will get to see that. <sighs> if not, then oh well. But, you know, I kind of want to know, Jericho. Come on. Tell me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, anyways. Um. So again, write down in the comments what you think uh, is going to happen and how you felt about this chapter. And thank you all for watching slash listening. If you would like to play Remember the Flowers yourself, you can find it over on Itch. And if you would like to support Remember the Flowers, you can uh, support them through their Patreon, where you get early access to early builds, um, like me. And you can find a direct link to the itch link and uh, the Patreon from the official Remember the Flowers Twitter pages, which will Twitter page, which will be linked down in the description, along with the Patreon. And I guess that's it for now, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye bye.